Alrighty. Let's get the step in. And let's get this live stream started. Um, don't know who's in. There's some concurrent viewers. All right. Let me go ahead and uh, slide this down there. Slide this out of the way. Okay. So tonight, I think we're going to be styling the Mithruna UI um, for the new engine because if we look, I'll run it real quick. Take a second to start here. Yeah, Gradle's got to kick off all its demons and so on. All right. So if we look, uh, those of you who've seen the game and so on and so forth, this is the default glass style that comes with Lemur, which is the UI toolkit we use for Mithruna here. Um, and it you know has that kind of like 1990s you know retro sci-fi kind of look to it. Oh, I made this theme, so you know I have to think it's cool or whatever. But um, it does get a little old, and it has nothing to do with Mithruna. Um, so we're going to change it. And I thought a lot of people have asked about you know how do I ch make my own lemur style. Um, and so I thought this could be useful for anybody. I've purposely tried to prepare as little as possible um, because I want everybody to see you know you know how, how I do it and how I would stumble and you know all of all of this stuff okay so um, first things first we're gonna exit out um, step one is going to be um, and you know feel free to ask questions as we go along um, I do have the chat open if anybody wants to say anything um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Lemur and we're going to find the style. We're going to start with the glass style and we're going to modify it to meet our needs. We're going to completely change it by the end. But this way, um, this way we'll um, know, Oakster know. No. What does no mean? Hey, how's it going? All right, so we'll start here. We'll come over here. So this is the regular glass style for m base mithru uh, base lemur. And so we'll come over here and we'll make a similar one. Not asking any questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so me, source main resources and we'll put this in interface and we'll call it through a UI group. I think that's the and I think that's the do we use a groovy? Yep. Okay, so we start with the glass style. Um. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's a qu quite a bit of delay for me on the chats. So use like 20 seconds or th something. Crazy. Um, okay, so now we're going to go over here. This So Lemur has uh, Lemur Proto, which is where s like some of the more advanced UI stuff like list boxes and things. And so there's some styling over here for the glass style because Lemur will concatenate them all together. And so we'll take these and we'll combine them into our one Mithruna style dot groovy. And which means that some of this stuff is duplicated. Um, I'm going to take it up to the top and see how duplicated. So we'll do all our imports. These imports are both already there. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Lemur will look for all of the, you know, if you say load the glass style, it will look for all the glass style dot groovy files and it will load them and kind of run them in order, um, which is great for if you're making your own extensions, you can include your own glass style stuff if you would need to tweak something for this custom component you're making. Um, it's great for the Java desktop applications. It's not so good for Android because Android will see that as duplicate resources. And uh, and so there's been a little bit of thing. But um, 
people who want to fix this can always concatenate one of these together um, and you know call it something else you know custom glass or something like that and they could still use the glass style and then just have one of them and I think these gradients um, I think these gradients should be the same yeah okay so a little bit of what we're seeing here and I'll go into it in more detail as I swap these out um, but this uh, TBT quad is sort of my abbreviation for what's called a nine patch in 3D graphics. Um, I think someone was nice enough to make a uh, some decent Javadoc for this. If we pull up the is it the TBT quad, yeah. So the idea is if you had like um, a texture with a border and a center you could define the texture coordinates in such a way so that the border is within this area and then the main center texture is with this area and what that allows you the UI to do is is stretch the center part you know it shows like where it would stretch so as it needs to make it bigger it'll stretch it but the borders stay the same thickness and so it's it, just trust me it's useful we'll we'll see how that works because I guarantee you I'm going to use some of that in the the lemur UI you know that's what gives the buttons their bevels and things like that um, Okay, so that's that. We've got this Mithruna Groovy. Um, we're going to change something about it to make sure that um, we know it's ours. First of all, we've got to change all these glass things because we're going to name ours something else. Um, let's call it paper because we're going to go with a paper theme. Uh, you know, because the whole idea behind the Mithruna UI is that you're looking in books and stuff. Um, uh, and so we'll we'll call this paper, and I'll just replace all these things that say glass with paper. We get very elemental in our UI styles. Uh, I could have called it wood. There was I did start a wood theme at one point that had like wood and and metal and things. But here we're going to do paper. There's probably going to be some wood that comes in, um, you know, some wood textures. I think that I'm going to try. S I'm going to try for a brass texture for either titles or buttons. We'll see. Um, you know, like a brass plate. But the idea behind the Mithruna UI is that you've got a book um, that you're going through, and eventually that will be more explicit because I actually do have. Um, that's not what we want to see. Oh, maybe we do, but not for this. Um, one of these windows. I tried to pull up some of the old graphics I'd done. Um, so there was actually a book user interface. Um, and if you watch the old demos, you can see it. Um, you know, I had an animated book that opens up and the pages, uh, you know, flip open and stuff. And we'll, we'll, I will bring that back. But, you know, integrating something like that takes a lot of time and a lot of tweaking. And I think everyone would rather I work on actual game features than tweaking the UI so we're just kind of kind of get rid of the you know 1990s retro thing uh, so for here we're just going to change something we know will show up um, so that when I switch the UI uh, when I switch the style in the app we'll see that it actually did something so here's the default color for labels um, and by default it's this you know sort of cyan uh, grayish cyan color that were a bright cyan so we're going to switch it to yellow um, in fact we'll switch it to almost a pure yellow uh, and that should if we go into lemur's main java uh oh secret super secret stuff um, so we will load what's the base styles load thing uh, not that we don't want that file we want uh, all classes. What is the method? See, this is the point where you guys who use IDE say we could just hit the thing and it'll show you. Um, load, d load. What's the Oh, it's the base styles. That's why I'm looking at the wrong class. 
So base styles, load style resources. So we're gonna make that one disappear. Uh, and the resource name was we put it in interface through the UI. Do I have to include? I think I have to include the Mithruna UI the Groovy. All right. Now we will run it, and if everything went well, the default text should now be yellow instead of cyan, and we can start chipping away. Um. Ooh. Okay, we're definitely running the new style or no you know what the issue is that all of Mithruna oh we didn't set the default that's what it is <laughs> okay so no nothing in Mithruna should be running with specifying glass directly except for these things that are tweaking the style for their own purposes um, so hopefully that will do it like I said we'll, st we'll all stumble together everyone will learn including myself yeah so see the default fonts now yellow we're definitely running our new style um, and if we you know start bringing it so, so anything that uses the default st label style will have this yellow now um, and so that, could, that lets us get started. Um, one of the first things we're going to want to do is redefine what a container's background looks like. Oh yeah, here we go. My uh, headphones making lots of noise. Okay. <laughs> AI generated image from a Mithuna screenshot. That'd be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I was playing with Dolly again earlier today I just I'm just not very good at coming up with prompts um, okay so bordered gradient is the one we're using now for you know this sort of default background for containers and that's obviously not gonna fly um, I so I have these uh, up for some old um, things I was playing around with I think I'm going to stick with you know something like uh, these sort of drawn uh, you know parchment and that kind of thing so let's first well let me open up uh, let me make a new window why not I only have like 500 windows open already um, so we'll go into Mithruna client let's see what uh, graphics I already have in here or do I have any at all all right interface let's see what we got so we got some things already I do have a drawn box border oh good I've got the old paper flattened nice that's gonna be useful um, I could not find that texture in any of the old stuff but apparently so here we've got paper.jpg um, so good we've already got these in the interface resources so then we should be able to just come up here and we don't even need uh, it doesn't even need to be a TBT anymore um, let's leave those old ones up there and we'll make a new one we'll start making our new ones so let's just define plain paper and new quad background component I think I can just say Um, yeah, I think I've overridden some things so I can say texture. Uh, so let's do interface. Was it PNG or JPEG? JPEG. Okay, so that's a simple quad background component. We ought to be able to come down here and just set the background to be plain paper. We don't need to clone it because we're not going to mess with the settings. 
and you know, I'm going to save some of these. Slider, we're definitely going to do different. Um, so let's leave this now. We'll just do that container. And so this will cause all kinds of mayhem uh, because uh, with the transparent glass style, if you nest containers, each of those containers gets uh, background, but because they're transparent, they just kind of stack and it creates a neat, neat UI effect. But I suspect we're going to get some weird artifacts. <laughs> the buttons look crazy now. Um, but we're already starting to see huh? the default pop-ups are not using... So they are using the new style. Why is that background window? So, oh, you know what? The other thing I wanted to do immediately, mediatedly, um, is I have scaled this UI. Let's put the gradient back for a second. So I did the poor man's uh, rescaling because when I was setting this UI up, I wanted to do as little work as possible. And consequently, I didn't want to change the font sizes and things. Um, so what I did was I scaled up all of the Mithruna user interfaces by one and a half. Um, so everything's 1.5 scale. And since we're starting a new style, I thought it, basically that's a pain to deal with all the time. Um, and some of the pop-ups and things aren't scaled and the, uh, anyway. So rather than doing that, I'm going to try to undo that scaling. If it turns out to be too much to get done in this, um, yeah, see, all of this, one and a half, one and a half, one and a half. And I didn't parameterize it very well. And that just means that some things are going to be giant. Um, let's go ahead and comment. Some of these out. Let's go for 1.5f. Okay, so those are all commented out. Help set level scale. Nope. We want everybody to be regular sized. Yeah. You'll find I leave a lot of commented out code laying around. Um, let's see if the GUI state does any of this too. Oh, ow, that hurt. That pop was loud. I should probably make sure volume is down. Yeah, okay. One less pop pop. Okay, so any one and a half, no, okay. So a menu state at least will get regular size. I'm gonna have to make that con connection to all of the Because I knew I was going to have to tear it out. I knew I was going to tear it out later, and I did not ugh, parameterize it. Yeah, that's ugly. Um, why did it do that? I think that the image, maybe we set the quad background component to be a certain size even tighter or smaller yeah we set it, we let it be um, it's normal what if I don't give it any insets bad things happen. Anyway, I may have to just revert this and do it all one and a half scale. Okay, so now that's normal. It was the insets that were messing things up. And it was because of the one and a half scale that I had to do those insets. But it's just, everything's going to be super wide, but uh, see, everything's tiny. And if we can, uh, see if we do single player, yeah, see, this is big too. We have to fix that. Um, I think with these two UIs, though, um, that was the main menu and the other one is the, where did I put it? Oh crap. Um, 
It is not the lobby state that we will need to fix that to. It is the oh, it's world selection state. That's worldless state. That's what it is. Okay. So all these app states they load different UIs, and each one of them, you know, has yeah. They've scaled up their UIs by one and a half, and we are going to unscale them by one and a half. So uh, the reason I want to do these two UIs, the main menu and the um, main menu, back to regular size, and the world selector, back to regular size, because the world selector has a list box and edit fields and things and create new world. Yeah, see, create new world's huge too. We're going to fix that because it's got, uh, you know, um, t a text field to enter data. So uh, where's the create world state? There it is. Um, yeah, okay. Good. Who's bibbing in me on the... Somebody's chatting over here. Oh, images. What did you do? <laughs> Using that image as the prompt, you got nice. I don't know what to say about that. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, back to the regularly scheduled stream already in progress. Okay, so we've got these guys scaled back to natural scale and we're going to have to create you know decent fonts and decent font sizes i think 24 was the one i used to like um and i'm going to pull over one of the old fonts that mithruna used to use um yeah see now everything see just with a bigger font we're back to regular size and we didn't have to do any funny yeah so we create a new world yes uh of course, this little guy needs to be bigger. Um, but that's a separate problem. Yeah. <laughs> it just, like, turned everything flat. It was kind of funny. Um, kind of looked like bushes or something. All right. So we've got a good start here. Um, we can see a couple different UIs. We want to start messing with things. And I was going to pull over... So I was, I was saying before, I was going to pull over one of the Mithruna fonts um, that I used to use because searching for fonts can take hours. But I'm actually thinking this one will be okay for now. And a lot of people complained about the old font because um, the capital letters and the lowercase letters looked the same, except for the lowercase letters were just smaller, but they all looked like capital letters, uppercase. So anyway, so we'll start... Uh, with this, we'll go back to making our background paper, start messing with the button styling, and we'll see rapidly how this will make the UI a lot different. So, so let's put our paper back, get rid of this. Um, I think for the buttons we're going to use, um, did I have my drawn grid? Yeah. So use drawn grid.png. So we're, uh, this one will be a. I steal one of these. Um, drawn grid. And that's going to be. Interface. Drawn grid.png. And this is the tricky part, is we've got a... Oh, drawn box would be good. Hmm. So drawn box would actually stretch pretty nicely. Yeah, for buttons, let's use something more exotic. So we'll use... Uh, Okay, drawn back 64, and then we'll pull this up again because I want to kind of count pixels. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight pixels in on all sides is where we want the border to be. And we already set it in here at 64. 
So I think zero based. Oh wait, that's the scale. I think then four, four pixels in from the top. Uh, so 127, uh, 123. I think that's Jerry Mips false for good. Okay. Get rid of my old indents. Um, so we've got background plain paper and four buttons. Where's the default button style? There it is. I'm gonna make background equals what I call it. Yeah, let's call it drawn box one. Because we're gonna have a different drawn box later. So buttons we're gonna make drawn box one. We only need to clone it if we're gonna modify it, but I think I will end up modifying it. We're gonna take that out now. Um, like color. For color we want um, from experience we want kind of dark colors that let the background bleed in a little bit to make them look like you know it was written on the thing and, and I tend to steer towards you know dark blues and things for the UI elements um, but we're gonna go I think this is a guess you know um, actually so my editor here has a color picker um, which is kind of cool of course, it doesn't give you it in floating point, and we could load, you know, Photoshop or something. But we're just going to guess for now. Um, so I think I want it to be a dark sort of cyan color, and we'll make it kind of grayish by bringing up the red to match. And then initially, we'll try 0.75 and see what that looks like. So let's see what our buttons look like if we do that. And you know what? Let's give our labels. Our label's default color is currently that cyan. We don't want that. Um, we want this to be just like a dark blue. Yeah, I think these are going to be too light. But we'll see. Again, it's a lot of trial and error. Usually, so if I was to design the theme from scratch and not try to piece it together using um, you know, bits and parts that I already had, I would probably do a mock-up. <laughs> so ugly. Um, I'd try to probably do a mock-up in Photoshop. Oh yeah, look at that. That's bad. Um, I'd probably do mock-up in Photoshop and then cut it up. And uh, Okay, so I'm actually liking the text colors okay. Um, that uh, background though, yeah, that's all messed up. All kinds of messed up. Um, yeah, and it doesn't get any better here. Oh, interesting. We use the border yeah, it's interesting. It does. Oh no! See, it's just. Ah, uh, maybe I've got the parameters messed up. So we're making progress, though. We're seeing changes. Um, but why is it doing that? What are the parameters to TBT quad background component? That's where we go back to the Java doc. The quad background component. The create method takes image scale z offset. Okay, so we know image scale is way wrong. Because we know we want that just to be a few pixels wide. Well, maybe one is what we want. Why is it so messed up, though? Oh, <laughs> I'm basing it on a. I based it on an image that's twice as big. It's actually only 64, so uh, this should be 63 minus four because we wanted four pixels in. Um, so that's going to be 59. It is just you know standard idiot mistake on my part. So now if we load it, it should look more like what we expect.
be much better. We've clearly done something wrong with our uh, border specification, but because um, they're not supposed to stretch the borders like that. So I think we need to bring those in a little bit more. All right. So yeah, these must need to be, let's try eight and eight, which means another four down here, which would be 555. With this texture, it probably doesn't matter um, how far in, because the middle it's not going to be real clear. Yeah, so we're close. Uh, you know, these sides fine. This side's pulling it in a little bit. I actually don't mind it um, for for this, but we might as well fix it, right? Yeah, this is just a temporary one. Um, let's see, we had yeah. So we changed the labels. Yeah, they're dark blue. Maybe a little too light. Make those darker. Um, we're starting to see, like it looks like something, huh? Okay, um, so then, like, we're left with what to do first. Um, let's change the default label to something darker, but still blue. But, like, more solidly blue. And I actually have a real texture for this sliders and one of these yeah there it is scrollbar.jpg and actually we probably need to cut that up okay, let's paste it in here it's going to be a similar sort of problem with the borders Anyway, one, one thing at a time. Uh, we were fixing the button. So let's bring these in a little bit more. And 53, 53. Let's try that. But yeah, clearly creating a UI from a UI style from scratch would be a lot harder than this if you don't start with the glass style. Because I started with the glass style, you know, we're able to make some pretty quick progress. And obviously, this logo's got to change at some point. Um, so, see, yeah, okay, this text is much darker. That's much nicer. Yeah, list box has got to be fixed. So, let's look on the list box next. Okay, so first of all, we're going to change the slider. Um, Roll background, and this is going to be another one of these. And I think, will this tell me what size it is? Yeah, yeah, a crazy size. Um, twenty-four by two seventy-four. I can't copy that either, so let's just make a note. Um, yeah, it's kind of a crazy size. Okay, so this one's going to be scrollbar.jpg. No MIPS. I think it's like four pixels in from the side. And then a lot from the top and bottom. Um, yeah, four in from the side should be fine. If it gets this even past that little hazy area. Then these guys, what we were say like three, six, nine, twelve. Ah, stupid mouse pointer. Mouse wheel, okay. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so thirty-three roughly. I was counting three pixels at a time. Um, so thirty-three to get us started. Uh, Twenty-one, and then two seventy-four minus thirty-three. So two forty-one. 
All right. If it's not right, it'll get us started at least. And so we set the background to that. Save the color for a second. Whoops. Let's get rid of that for a second. Let's see what our scroll background looks like now. Oh, you know what? It, I don't know if that's a vertical or a horizontal. Hmm. Nope, it's right. Um, of course, uh, we don't want the arrows included, as it turns out. And so what I'm going to do is instead of that, we're going to chop out these buttons later and use those as our buttons. And instead, for our background, we're going to use the drawn box that we use for the buttons. Should get us close to the same effect without the buttons built into the single player yeah so see that's nice um, and we can actually if we clone it we can set the image scale smaller to make the border thinner um, so set Oh, it doesn't let me set it. Well, that's no fun. Okay, so we'll make a separate drawn box. Okay, I'm going to save this because um, this is how I code, by the way. Um, I'd, I like to keep moving forward. And one of the ways to keep moving forward is to not be, not be afraid to remove stuff. And deleting feels so final to me. Um, I've been coding a long time. I didn't always have the safety net about multiple backups and saves and all that other stuff. And so rather than spending even a millisecond worrying about removing something, I just comment it out. It's like if I never look at it again for the next you know, 20 minutes, I can go and delete it later. Um, and so I'll make passes through the code to just wholesale delete all the commented out stuff. Um, but the, like just it wastes time to be like well should I keep it maybe I'll need it later just don't worry about it comment it out move on with your life um, so let's change this to 0.5 so that's the image scale basically this is what the base scale of the image is and the reason you need that is because say you had an image that's 64 by 64 um, but you want to display it in 128 by 128 quad um, it's going to scale that up but it needs to know for the parts that it's not scaling, those borders, it needs to leave those the same. And so it needs to know what you want the pixel size of the image to be on the non-stretched parts of the borders. And so now we're saying we want those borders to be thinner. We're going to scale those borders down to half. And so we'll change this back to scroll background because we basically defined a whole different background for that. Now if we run, we should have a thinner border around the thing with the stuff. And I think we'll probably do that for, yeah, see that's nicer. Little thin little border around there. And we could probably, it may have some inset set that we could delete. Um, anyway, we've got to fix the list box itself it's garbage um, trying to decide what I want to do well okay this is not the final UI so we're gonna just do stuff that works and one of the things that's gonna work is if we use the scroll background for the list box as well so let's find list box which will be down here um, yeah list container so we'll make the list container that. Ah, can't type. Do we need insets too? Let's leave them out for now. Uh, 
list selector. We're definitely going to want to change the list selector, but not at the moment. List item, background transparent. Yes, that's correct. But we want to change the color. And I think making these a little brown. Let's try that. I'm just trying to give... Uh, try to use color to give things a theme. Um, you know, I'm no designer, but it just appeals to me to have like a consistent theming. Um, okay, so these guys, single player. Yeah, so their list box, ooh, that's more yellow than brown. Um, but see, it goes, like the selector goes kind of garbagey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, we need to fix the, uh, size of this window to be big enough that it doesn't auto stretch because that looks really ugly um, the, as the background skeeges around like that looks kind of ugly I don't actually hate the yellow but um, it's like kind of a gold color but it's not really what I was going for um, so we give it a little more red and uh, I don't know what those styles are and actually I was Worried I wasn't going to like the yellow on here, but I actually am okay with that. Um, so we could create a new world and we get this. Okay, so that's not even too bad. We definitely have to fix these title bars. Um, maybe that's where we can use the brass. Yeah, I like that idea. So make a detour for a second. We were fixing... Oh, let's before I get too far, we'll fix the font on this... Um, Let's make this 0.4. That makes that 0.3 and this 0.4. So it'll be a dark brown before we go too farther. So single player. Yeah, okay, so that's a little better. I want it to look, you know, written on in ink. Um, I may make it darker later. It may be that the transparency is too transparent, um, but we still got some things to fix, and so we'll move. We'll move. On. Actually, and I don't mind this highlight either. I have a gold, like a gold border that looks like metal gold, um, that I used before. But actually, I don't mind this. I'm going to leave it for now. We definitely need to fix these guys, and I'm going to clip out. Oh yeah, I was going to show you. Um, See, I, ha I was already going to do something else, and then I got sidetracked. Anyway, let's fix let's fix the scroll. Because if we get that done, um, essentially we're done. I mean, we need to... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. By the way, uh, one of you gave me a bad seed. That That is the bad seed, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a giant UI. Okay, exit. I was going to do these title bars. That's what I was going to do next. Um, they are... Yeah, title label... There we go. We'll give it the same background as a button. No, no, no. That's what I was going to do. The uh, in old Mithruna. Um, those of you who played the original Mithruna, I had these um, brass button backgrounds. So let's copy that into new Mithruna. And you know what? We're not going to use this scroll bar image. I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, so we've got this brass button background, and it looks like one, two, three, four, five, five pixels. It is 151 by 34, of course it is. Um, so let's make another one. 151 by 41, is that what I said? This one will definitely want to stretch. I'll call this brass plate. And what is it called? Brass button.png. And it is 151 wide. We said like four pixels in. We'll try it. I think that's going to stretch funny. Um, so 151, which 
is really 150 minus 4, 146, and 41 minus 40 minus 4, 36. Let's give that a try. Brass plate. Where or oh where are the buttons? Oh, we wanted it for the title bar. That title label. Yeah. Alright, let's see what that does. How many people we have on right now? Zero. Nobody's on. Nobody's watching. We'll keep going. Okay, in case people watch this later. Because I'm only going to go for another 14 minutes anyway. Oh, yeah, see? Already, that's looking good. Yeah, I need to figure out what style it element ID is used for this background. It might be a dialogue window of some kind. Um, yeah, I like that. Single player. Ah, it didn't fix this. Why are they not using the regular... Oh, I bet it's window title. Let's try window title label. And then we'll do an etching effect. Um, no, it should be title label. And will the state? Well, we can go and see because we can look. Um, window title. Hmm. Did I set a window title? So where is it picking that style up? Let's look for window title. Yeah, there is no window title. Oh, are you still here? I think it was just YouTube that was messing with me. Yeah, YouTube says there's nobody on. Oh, one. Yeah, there's one. Okay. Well, thanks for sticking around. Um, okay. Why is it not? Oh. Okay, we're still window dot title. It's gonna be label. I don't know why it's picking up a different one. Only the cool kids stick around to the end. Yeah, okay, that fixed it. So then we'll just put that in the style. Um, some of these apparently use just window title. And I don't know where they're picking up the... Okay, so maybe the viewers thing is just wrong. I'll pretend you're all here anyway, because somebody might be watching later. Um, but I'm gonna put window title in the style. Um, I think some windows used um, I don't know why nothing else would have picked that up. Um, so that should fix all of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so I, I like that. Um, but we're going to make it look like... I think I want to make it look like it's stamped in. Which means I want to flip the colors of the, s of the shadow and the highlight. So single player, yeah, so look at that. That's much better. And we want the title to kind of be black with yellow highlights or something. So... Let's flip those inside out. We'll show you how to do it. Window title title label. I really wish these were the same. Um, 
I wonder... I could just use title. Yeah, I, I'll just keep doing it this way. Um, so color we're going to make like black. Um, or maybe super dark blue. And 100%. And then the highlight color, we're going to make super bright yellow. Like almost gray, super bright yellow. And also, no transparency. Oh, that's not highlight color. Oh, I meant shadow color. Okay, so we, fortunately we copied this thing and I can keep this. Nobody's using the highlight color anyway. Um, it's only if it's a button. Shadow offset, still good. Press plate, press plate, press plate. Okay, let's try it. There is r really one thing I want to get to. Um, okay, so that one didn't pick it up. That's using the other style. Um, there we go. Oh, look at that. I actually, that's really nice. I really like that. Looks like it was stamped right in. And, uh, you know, I'll pick a different font later, but literally I have of like a, a thousand fonts. Um, like choosing a font, my God, it can take you forever. Because these are just the A's. There's like a hundred A's. Those are a thousand fonts in this pack that I bought a long time ago. Selecting a font's rough. Okay, so, you know, these guys need a border. Okay, so sometime I have to go back and add a UI style for win a window, a pop-up window, and we'll give them a background. But I'd have to go and change the code to add a style for these containers. Um, I have a lot of these pop-up windows. Fortunately, you know, the uh, pop-up manager puts the dark background. So at least they show up. But I still need to do, at a minimum, I still need to fix this right here these and I was going to show you before we did anything before I got off tonight um, off the stream I wanted to show if you don't know about this software I'm a Photoshop subscriber but um, the issue is that um, my operating systems are old enough now or something that I can't run the software anymore um, and so I'm on the verge of shutting my subscription down because I, I mean, I'm paying nine dollars a month for software I don't use. I'm gonna try to hide these ads so you guys aren't don't have to watch them all. So Photopia is uh, it doesn't have all the features of Photoshop, but it has most of them that I would ever use, and it certainly will open Photoshop files. And so if we find my original this guy, the scroll bar. I have a scroll bar at PSD here. Um, if we load, yeah. So I think we're not going to get away with. If I go like this. Yeah. Okay. So that gets the ads off the screen. So see, uh, it basically has all the features of Photoshop, or most of them anyway. Um, what is the zoom? It's like, yeah, there it is. And so we could come in here and we can chop out these buttons and make new make new ones. So no worries. Um, let's do control C. Let's make a new one project. Let's make it a standard width for once. Um, 32 by 32. Um, let's call it up button. Blink. Where do I say go? Create. There it is. Okay. Whoops. F. Okay. We want to 
yeah, the money. It's like, um, you know, technically you guys who are patrons are paying for it right now, and it's and it bugs me because I could much better use that money for, um, you know, server upkeep and things. Um, oh, it's gonna. Is it locking the? Okay, that's what I do. Okay, so we fill that up. Gets this nice. Uh, I don't like that the. Um, so let's do this. Let's make this separate. So that's separate, which means we can stretch it separate and let's do this. Oops. Photoshop hacks, right? Um, let's cut that out, paste it back, and for each of these, it's a control. Uh, no, I think I have to do this. Uh, so, all right. this and then control should have moved yeah that it is it's just not it doesn't show the cursor okay it's like I'm a Photoshop guy I know this should work okay so then we will take this layer okay we don't need it selected we go uh, scale transform scale boink oops no we just want control Z transform scale just want to lower that guy down. Yeah. Okay. Bring these guys back. Um. Okay. Then transform scale. All right. That's good him back okay so he is right there okay cool and transform scale gosh it's like watching paint dry but digital paint in it okay so pull him over here sorry we're gonna end up running along because I'm just futzing around in Photopia all right Hopefully this is remotely entertaining. Um, so I'm going to save as PSD. Um, boy, we're in the way wrong place for that, aren't we? Development. <sighs> Too many folders. Get, GitHub. Mithruna. Client. Source. Main. Resources. Hmm. This is going to be interesting because I'll have to make sure to... Uh, Oh, I already have things. Okay. So we got that one. And actually, this is off-center, but I'm not going to worry about that today. Um, boy, that creates an optical illusion for me. It looks like this line bends. Um, anyway, so we're going to export as PNG. Up button. Save. Save. And we're going to cheat. For making the down button, we're going to cheat. Duplicate this layer. And then flip it. Horizontally. Oop, not horizontally, vertically. Transform, flip, vertically. Okay. Um, ooh. Oh, you know what I can do? Save me lots of time by moving these guys up. Ha! Ah. Now I can see if I like that or not. Nah, this is fine. Put them in the same place. Yep. Okay. And now, first of all, 
Save the PSD again. Yep, overwrite the one before. Now, export. Export as PNG, but this one we're going to say down button. Yeah, about the most annoying thing about uh, Photop Phot Photopia, however you pronounce it, is save. Um, just that it's not on the local file system, so that's kind of annoying. But, I mean, what else could they do? But it does really have all, I mean, I load textures. I also don't have, like, the, um, I don't think it has normal map generation, like, uh, my Photoshop has the NVIDIA plugins for normal map generation and some other things. And I don't think Photopia does. I haven't actually looked. I haven't needed to generate a normal map in a while. Okay, so we've got in our Mithruna directory, we should now have up button and down button. Yeah, I never got the hang of GIMP. I had to learn Photoshop. So I worked for a contractor that was an overflow co contractor for Net Netscape if you can remember Netscape back in the day. And Netscape had this deal where when they sold somebody servers, um, they would give them some amount of web design, uh, you know, as, you know, some hours, you know, eight hours of web design or whatever. And so they sold some servers to NASA, Ames Research Center out in California. And we were the overflow contractor, so I got to fly out to NASA with, some, with my uh, boss and stuff and meet with NASA Ames Research Center. They gave us a little tour of the facility, which was kind of cool. And, um, and you know, design a couple mock-ups of uh, websites for them, which I did some some cool sci-fi themes. The, ultimately, they were looking for something more conservative and they didn't take any of my designs. Um, and I was new, I, I was, yeah. Today, those designs definitely would not fly. Um, Cause like there was one like cool space themed with lots of like nebulas and stuff and I don't know. I thought they were cool, but I had to learn Photoshop that weekend for that particular project. Okay, so up button. We're just gonna load the texture directly. But it was interesting to go out and meet with those guys. Na NASA is no joke. It's a lot of fun. Uh, up button. Did I name him up button? I think I did. And I did PNG, which is not actually the best for this, but okay. Let's give our slider button, left button, right button, plus and minus is good. Up button, down button. We want, um, well, how is it getting the ones now? Oh, it's got text. Hmm. <coughs> Uh oh, into the Pepsi. Must be time to finish the live stream. Um, okay, so actually, we probably should have made anyway. Probably should have made them icons and wipe out the text. Let's do that. What's the difference? So, somebody might be asking. What's the difference between an icon and a quad background component? Well, I'll tell you. In Lemur, an icon component will default to its actual natural size. So when you load an image, um, you know, 64 by 64, then that icon component wants to be 64 by 64, which is useful for putting in buttons and things uh, where you don't really want them to grow you want the button to be sized by the thing in it you know so if you had you know all your little gooey toolbars and things um so we ought to be able to just say i think that's a reasonable size so let's just change these guys to um this keep these for now and steal the path it will make a texture for us. We don't have to worry about that. And now, what we are going to have to do is set the backgrounds to null. In all of these cases, we're going to set the backgrounds to null. So 
so no background, but we do want to set the icon, a button, icon equals down button. Okay, and these guys we want. All right, but for now, we don't have a button for these. I do want to set text equal to nothing. And I suppose I should go ahead, just in case. Uh, let's see what that does. I think we're closing in on what I plan to cover tonight. Um, if this works, we'll see. Okay, so I know I have to go back and fi figure out what style this is using. Um, so if we go to single player. Hey, look at that, our buttons show up. Got all kinds of inset problems. Um, I know where those come from. But look, our buttons showed up. That's kind of cool. Um, they're a little wide, maybe. But what we can do... So... I plan on making all of my stuff. Um, definitely for the UI stuff, for sure. Because it's all going to be... Well, so much of the, the geometry is going to be generated. But I... Um, you know... If I can ever hire an artist, then I'll make some cut. Then I'll I'll do that. Um, but otherwise, like for the mobs and stuff, I really want them to be kind of unique to Mithruna. Um, you know, just so that it can be like nothing else, uh, its own thing. Let's see. We want to set the scale. Set icon scale. Good. We can set the scale here. So let's set the scale down a little bit. But yeah, that's my that's my general. Um, thinking on the subject today you know priorities change sometimes but right now I do plan to create all my own assets or hire somebody to do it down the way I think I think half size is going to be too small but it'll be less blurry so but yeah off the shelf assets they get um, I have several models and things I bought. There's actually a dragon I bought, which I like, um, but I still think I want to create my own dragon. Yeah, it's too small. Um, and so, um, I believe I, I'll create my own. Um, I have the the glass dragon, which, uh, you know, the thumbnail for this, actually the one that's in the, um, this guy, this, this is a photo I took of a glass statue of a dragon that um, somebody made for me as a gift one time. And then, of course, it's a clear thing, and I colored it and, uh, you know, put magic haze around the thing and so on and so forth. But I want to kind of take a bunch of pictures of this and see if I can recreate it in 3D. But that's be the most normal thing. I, all the other creatures I want to be some kind of unique thing for Mithruna. Um, let's say, uh, so the slider button backgrounds, um, we don't want them to default to equals, what is it, drawn box, or, yeah, let's use drawn box for those. That's the one we're using for buttons, right? So all of the sliders, backgrounds do that, and we'll take them off of the left and right. So they pick up the default. Color is fine for the moment. No, it's not. I'll fix the colors too. Make all the colors default. Um, so see, what was my theme for buttons? Dark blue, right? Uh, Go super dark blue, and then we don't need these colors anymore because I'll pick them up from the slider button. I don't have any side by sideways um, scroll bars to test, so we'll just use the up and down ones. And point five was definitely too small. 
And the other thing we want to fix is slider insets. Let's just remove it all together for now. Um, which will be default. That may not be right either. Let's just set them to zero, zero, zero. Let's try it. Boop, boop, boo. hmm. Okay, so actually I could take the text out of that one and it would fit better. And there's still some kind of scroll bar border insets issue here. So I think we'll try to fix that and then we'll wrap it up. Um, where is the slider? Slider paper insets should be zero. Uh, all these insets are set to zero. The other thing I wanted to take out was the text here. Set this to empty text. So where is it picking up? Oh, well, you know what? I actually, yeah, I set them to zero. Set them to zero right here. Let me just set them big and we'll see if that's really the same insets that we're playing with it might actually be margins yeah so that sets the insets for the component itself not the insets for the si guys inside this is definitely uh, okay I like that that's fine these line up pretty well buttons aren't too small we definitely need to get rid of that um, So I don't know why the thumb, hmm, might have to debug that another time. And oh yeah, tabbed pane, all these things are going to need to be fixed. Um, like if we start messing with, um, I think we're pretty close. Uh, you know, I'm going to play with this, obviously, for a couple more hours before I'm done, and you guys don't need to watch all that. I think you've kind of got the idea on how I do this. Um, yes, yeah, so that's got to be... i got to restyle some things now that the defaults, you know, the style doesn't fit the particular place in the UI. Um, you know, I think this scroll bar is okay for now. I don't like the fact that there's this big, wide border in here, but that actually may be, given that there's pixels here too, that actually may be how I've defined this border. I may have given it too much margin. In fact, okay, sorry, I am going to look at that real quick. Because um, that is the, what did we call it? The Scroll background, yeah. Um, I used drawn box again. Oh, you know, I think it sets the margins to 10 because of this and then doesn't scale them back down. So if we check the TDT quad background components, we should be able to set the margin, yeah. So let's try setting the margin something smaller. That's actually maybe a bug. Um, let's try setting it to four pixels. Am I going with the opening books again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely. I I talked about that at the beginning. You may have been. You may have stepped away. Um, this is this is even a stopgap UI. This is not the final UI. Um, There'll be the desk and the opening books, and instead, and when you select single player, it'll take you over to the engine and spin the little dials and all that. That was a lot of fun. Um, oh yeah, so see, we've definitely tightened up that space now. 
Um, it could probably be cleaned up a little bit because there's still a little teeny pixel there. Um, so, yeah, the um, yeah the opening books and in, in totally. And so then when we're in the game, um, actually I've been playing in Z Space World. I don't know why I call it Z Space. Oh, just to get it at the end of the list, I gave it Z. Um, this one starts you off in uh, up in snow, but I have walked quite a bit of ways. So we see already a lot of the UI style has been fixed, um, but yeah, and everybody's not a one and a half scaled anymore, so that's got to be fixed. I like this over here because um, oh, see, so much of this is they have obviously these need to be they're still one and a half times, but um, and this too. But I liked this world because it's got like. Over there, you can't see it yet because I'd have to walk a lot farther, but there's a real ocean over there, according to the big map during generation. And I wanted to walk over there and see it. I'm, I'm really far away from spawn right now. Spawn was up in these mountains over here. Um, so these sh should be okay. Oh, yeah, so s we'll scale these down. But, like, already, these guys look all right. Um, I'll give windows a border because the windows should need a border. The, you know, these help buttons... Um, some of them need a different style because any of the buttons that just float like this are going to need a different style. And that's, you know, just sort of a, because I started the UI with a default style, um, you know, I didn't specify different element IDs and things to give them unique styles because the default was okay for that particular location, but now it looks silly. Um, these kind of pop-ups, uh, they're going to have to change. I have, yeah, so see, this is okay. Um. But for example, I have somewhere where am I? Where I have this old paper, um, which will be for pop-ups. Uh oh, um, which will be for pop-ups like menus and things. So this will be the border for those, um, you know, stretched in here. And uh, so it'll, I don't know. And they'll and there's I think there's a shadow one too, um, which would be kind of cool. Um, yeah, so just different things I got to do to the UI, um, but the but okay, so oh yeah, got uh, issues here in the blueprint editor. <laughs> we can't see the blueprints, um, so things I've got to fix. Uh, oh no, we haven't opened it up yet. That's right, we got a desk and uh, edit the blueprint. Yeah, okay, so this part's okay. These are just all windows are way too big. Um, but see, these look okay. Uh, yeah, so they gotta fix the selectors, the, you know, the selector controls, restyle those. Uh, but most of the things, at least they don't look, at least everything doesn't look, you know, that 90s alien sort of. Oh, yeah, see, we shouldn't, sh we shouldn't still be able to select any of this stuff while the blueprint editor's open. <laughs> That's funny. Um, the other thing is uh, tab panes. Yeah, so it's the buttons on the tab panes I'll have to change. Ah, oh, we do have horizontal sliders. They've got to change. Way too big. Um, I think I might have to pick a different border for these buttons. Um, but anyway, we're getting there. Oh yeah, i got to scale all this down. Check boxes. I actually have checkbox uh, graphics somewhere little hand-drawn check somewhere in here um, anyway we'll find it for some titles I have this banner which would be kind of fun to use um, but at any rate I think that's all I'm gonna cover tonight um, I think we went through a lot and then didn't do much at all at the same time um, yeah all these menus have to be scaled back down and I'm going to try to release something on Monday night um, with I'm really working on the oh so let me show you that um, sneak preview for all those who are <laughs> still hanging on um, the uh, so if we continue the last world the reason I had 
um, a spawn character is because I wanted to go back to spawn on this particular um, world because I'm playing with the property controls, being able to like stake claims on the on the land. And uh, right now I have a claim built around the spawn tower that's automatic when the spawn tower is created. And so we're in progress right now, but you can see the corner markers and you can, they're not real objects. Um, they're, s they're only supposed to be enabled when the claim mark, like when you had the claim tool, like in the old days, um, in this case, there'll be like a toggle. Uh, you'll pop up a UI, um, you know, your claims UI, which will have like a little toggle to turn this view on and off so that you could even leave because it'll have the glowing walls and stuff around like the old Mithruna did. Um, and you could even leave it on while you're building so you know where your borders are. And then this so be a, the property book, which will have your list of your properties and, you know, a page to show when you select a property what the details about that are. But, you know, actions to give people badges and things like the old stuff. And that's what I'm working on this weekend. Um, trying to get, like, the minimum in to release on Monday. The UI stuff I'll clean up as I go. Um, you know, making it at least functional, taking out all the one and a half scale and cleaning up some of the things I missed. But in general, I'm focusing on getting the property tools working because then when I release the server, I can leave it up and I know people can protect their property and I can protect the spawn area from spam and things like that. Yep, clean blocks. So, um, so that's it for tonight. Uh, I'm going to spend the next hour or so, you know, cleaning up uh, these one and a half scalings and things like that and then get back to um, working on property stuff. Uh, this uh, The actual um, these even though these aren't real objects they can still be dragged around uh, um, okay so it didn't equip my uh, didn't equip there it is so they can actually be dragged around and that'll be how you adjust your claim just like before um, there's also the main marker inside which is how it'll you know just like before you know you could drag this around in different angles to make it appear on the map at a different angle they don't appear on the map yet but that's coming um, all things i'm trying to get done this weekend and thanks for joining me um you know you guys go forth and have a great weekend i'll see you online if you guys are in uh the discord i'll i'm there to chat if you guys are watching and you don't know about the simsilica discord and want just let me know and I will send you a link. Um, I don't want to make it like fully public because then you get riffraff, I guess, but you know, anybody who requests an invite to the Discord can join the Discord. We have private channels for patrons, but there's a general channel and other things for everyone else. Um, thanks for joining, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.